Luxury without limitations. Style without compromise. A life well lived. Welcome to Selling the Lux Life, the only radio show that seeks out and highlights the deeply authentic and genuinely meaningful, unique luxury lifestyle experiences in Orange County. Bringing new and emerging premier products and services to discerning clients and connecting the affluent customer to the finer things in life. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Selling the Lux Life. I'm Rod Gantis and I am here with Mr. Chester Pompey. And this guy, you guys, some, some of you may know, who know me may know this guy, Troy Russell of the newly formed Troy Anthony. But I'm going to tease you a little bit longer we'll get back to that. I want to get to Chester right now. We are sitting in vestiario, right? right. Which means what, Chester? Clothing. Clothing. Or clothing. I'm assuming it's in Italian. It is in Italian, okay. absolutely. And I'm, I'm getting a sense with your last name that there's a Italian lineage absolutely. going on? Absolutely, yeah. Of course, Pompeii being from the city, Pompeii, not myself, of course, but I definitely... Where, where are you originally from in Italy? The family's from Culad, which is outside of Rome. Okay. So I have some from northern Italy as well as down in Rome is where the family we came from or came from, pretty much so. And, and um, it's a beautiful store. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, I, I've said this to you before. It's not a large footprint, but you have done so much great stuff with the space. And we're right on PCH in Corona del Mar. Yep. So, is this the first time for you, like in the clothing business? Oh, I mean, gosh, no. I figured if you come up with a name like Vestario, that there's a little bit of there's something that history. goes along with it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, prior to this, I had a store out in Palm Desert on El Paseo. Okay. Um, I chose to. That, that was uh, 11 years in the making. Okay. It was out there, and um, kind of goes back to how Troy and I met too. But uh, the store was Pompeii's. Oh. It was on El Paseo, and uh, primarily was a more medium to higher price point uh, store. Mm -hmm. Uh, over the years, I saw changes within on the street um, as far as the seasonality, businesses coming and going. <clears throat> and over the last several years, just with the influx of things online uh, and just the demographics of people coming in and coming out for season, there were too many things that I didn't care for. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, I used to live in Newport Beach. Uh, I used to be. Uh, with my partner, we had an interior design business here in town and lived in Newport, but then eventually moved out to the desert full time, uh, was out there actually almost 15 years, mm -hmm. and decided that I didn't want to stay in the desert any longer and I wanted to open up a store here in uh, Newport, Corona Del Mar area. Well, let, let me ask you this though, because it's interesting, anybody who's familiar with Southern California, if you're familiar with the last few years of what's been going on, you would almost, you're almost contrarian. Like, there was a lot of uh, flow to the desert, mm -hmm. and there's like almost like a renaissance with Modernism Week and all that stuff that's happening in Palm Springs and Palm Desert, and 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 it, it, you would think that the timing would be to stay there, especially if you've invested 11 years of being there, right? right. But it's interesting. I find it interesting that because that you come, you you go back to where you're from, and you actually establish a space. It's very nice. By the way, don't get me wrong. I love the fact that you're here as an offering. Thank you. Because there's not enough in my book, right, that carries good quality stuff that's obviously very well thought out in terms of sourcing. Yeah. I mean, all you need is five minutes in here if you have any sense of style. I'm not picking on anybody, but, you know, <laughs> to basically walk through here and but within about 10 feet, I guarantee you, you will get a sense of exactly what I'm talking about. Chester will never stay in, but he's got one of the highest taste levels in the industry, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very nice. So, so interesting. And then Corona Del Mar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, was, it was just a space that I, I had found, well, actually moved here back in the, the late summer, uh, was looking at another location, and then unfortunately due to some personal medical situation came about, and it kind of ceased the operation of moving forward. Right. Uh, because a lot of unknowns. Life happens, And yeah. um, fortunately, things were resolved, the doctor took care of me very well, and so pursued it again and found this space back right around the holidays, mm -hmm. at the same time when I was coming through everything, and um, I thought, okay, how to make this work? Mm -hmm. Square footage was a challenge, but um, put a couple things together and thought things through, and it took a little bit longer than wanted, 
Uh, but, however, open now just about five weeks. Well, take, take a few minutes. To, I mean, I'm just putting my interior designer hat on. We do commercial interior design. But take a minute and talk about that, Chester, because, you know, you've got a great location. It's a destination area, it right? So a lot of activities take place over the course of the year, Christmas walk, et cetera, and so forth and so on. You're, you know, what are you, like less than a block and a half from the Sherman Gardens, right? It's right. a great, great, really great location. But you've got a small footprint, right. so let's talk about those challenges and how you, you you overcome them. Because the name of the show is selling the Lux Life, so it's not necessarily only about the products. It's also about what goes into the mind of somebody that is sophisticated enough to sell the Lux Life, regardless of you know different mediums, different products, different services, take a different nuances. But take a minute, please, and share that if you wouldn't mind. Sure, sure. Well, when in looking at the space. Number one, there wasn't enough of storage. Yeah. So how to incorporate that? Number two was the vast window space because it's pretty much three quarters of the. Yeah, space you don't have walls. Is, is not walls, yeah. other than yeah. that back yeah. wall there and that one there. Right. So to make it all flow and work well, one night sat down with my partner who takes care of the uh, the marketing. Yeah. Um, sat down and we just kind of I just drew it out and I said, why not do some kind of cabinetry underneath? So after looking at different kind of furniture places and galleries and what have you, found these kinds of cabinetry that worked well, put the bar system in to give it a little bit more of an open feel versus mm -hmm. banking it all with cabinetry because it would have really mm -hmm. encroached on the area. And then to still enable to show the product and people just to touch. Mm -hmm. uh, what I wanted to do as much as was possible would be to have as many items open so they could touch and feel the fabric. Right, not enclose them. And not enclose them. Yeah. And unfortunately, you do have to, in limited space, you have to have some things that are just going to be continually full. You know, but, but I, I tell this to people all the time, Chester, and it's kind of interesting. You know, we have sometimes a philosophy when it comes to retail, and unfortunately or fortunately, uh, retail has changed quite dramatically. You're looking at a top real estate location, high dollar rent, you know, at, if you can make something happen in a scalable model that's smaller, you are going to be in, a, in a more of an advantage. Plus, you know, you don't have a lot of storage means that you don't need to carry a lot of inventory, but you have to be very sophisticated and clear and have good resources to source stuff when you need it. And those who are basically having a discerning eye, I would think, I don't know if Troy would agree with me, is that they will wait. If they've got somebody that's styling them, if somebody has got a sense of personal, you know, awareness of their style or image that they're trying to project, they will, and, and you see that a lot of that in the custom side of it, Yes. But I think it also applies to retail, because yes. now you don't really have the ability to take on 3,000 square feet. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't really want to yeah. take no, on 3,000 square does. feet. Nobody does. Right. Nobody does. Anymore. And do you, I, I will just tell you this. It could very easily have been a space that would have been feeling very claustrophobic. Oh, right? Totally. Trying to maximize what you're talking about, right? Right. So I look around, and I don't feel that. I, there's an openness, yet there's a lot that's on display and showcased in the windows. You've used every inch of real estate on glass to display, but you have not also buried yourself in the middle of the store with everything around in clothes. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so almost a, a, a men's wardrobe. It is, it looks, it looks it, you that's a very in, good way to describe it's, it's, it. It's, it's a very gentleman's feel, because this is a gentleman's store. Mm -hmm. So the guy that could come in, he could feel very relaxed and select practically everything that he would need yes. in his wardrobe. Yeah, or trust you as call it a valet in, in the traditional in sense, sense of the word right to basically find the other items for them right and if you if I get into the habit of knowing that I have things coming up and if I'm accustomed to maybe ordering some custom clothing then I will take the time in advance to contact you and say I like this jacket I'd like to source a pair of shoes with it what have you right, right. and so how long have you guys known each other Seven years? I was going to say seven, seven, years, eight yeah, years, seven years. Yeah, seven years now, yeah. yeah. At that time, he was working for one of the manufacturers that I had mm -hmm. showcased out in the desert store. He had walked in the store one day, <laughs> and that was a that was a 2,400 square foot store. This, is, yeah. this store. is a story you were telling me the other day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so he walks in, and I looked at Troy, and I went, you looking for a job? <laughs> he says, no, I happen to be one of your reps. And I went, oh, really? That's a, that's a shame. <laughs> And it's a shame I've got a job for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> because I would have hired him in a spot. And Troy did. Uh, fortunately, we become very, very close as friends. Um, and, and 
uh, he had helped me during some personal times mm -hmm. there several years ago when I had some family matters back east. But yeah. the the thing is, is is that we've always kept that bond, and we just always did things together or saw each other or whatever. And then when he knew I was opening up here, I knew he had gone into the more custom tailorable mm -hmm. aspect, mm -hmm. uh, and I said, how could we amalgamate with each other and Greg, you're in LA, I'm down here, yeah. but how can we make it where you could get into this, where you could provide that don't give, don't give it away just yet. Oh, okay. Well, don't, don't give it away <laughs> okay, just yet. We're going to take a break and then we're going to come back. Okay, okay. Right? So we're going to take a break and when we come back, you'll find out a little bit more about that Yeah. and why Tro Troy Russell also has the name of Troy Anthony associated with him. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome everybody to uh, this episode of Selling the Lux Life. I'm Rod Gantis, your host, and I am here at Vistiario. I did that good twice you in did a row. Good yeah. Vistiario, uh, <laughs> a, a, the gentleman's, what are we calling it? Ge the gentleman's wardrobe. Oh, yeah. The gentleman's yeah. wardrobe in Corona del Mar. How long has it been open? Chester? Five weeks. Okay. Chester Pompey and Troy Russell, but then he told me Troy Anthony. <laughs> And so, like, what is with I? What is with the Troy Anthony? The Troy. It's, it's simple enough. When I started the brand, uh, I was very coaxed to use my name. Yeah. And uh, originally it was Troy Russell, but then it was, oh, should I do Troy Anthony? I think Troy Anthony hits the year a little better. Yeah. It's, I like it a little more. Anthony is simply my middle name. Okay. So, so, so now you know. That's the rest of the story. It's my new name. It's Troy, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Troy Anthony. I'm reborn. Anthony <laughs> is his new name. <laughs> and so, tell me about Troy Anthony. So Troy Anthony is custom clothing. I do a heavy focus on Italy. Um, I do offer a Chinese make, but the way that I differentiate my brand versus most other custom clothing operations is that I focus mainly on the Italian. And so being able to, to visit Italy and the United Kingdom and see the way the cloth Man is Man hates made, to travel. I hate it, never leave. <laughs> so being able to go overseas and see how cloth is actually made yeah. has just given me a deeper appreciation for what cloth is and seeing it go from this to that. And so I just believe that cloth of better manufacturers should be made up in the okay. right place. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna give the guy a little plug, right? I was gone, the reason why we have not had a lot of uh, selling the Lux Life recently is because we were retooling the show and then I was gone for about three weeks or so traveling. And I happened to go through London. And this gentleman right here arranged for me for a behind the scenes at the Savile Row. At Savile yeah, at Row, Row, Row. Yeah. the Mecca yeah. in London, right? And it was an amazing experience. I spent an afternoon basically, doors open to all these you got tailors the and cutters, showroom. the Kingsman showroom. Yeah. I mean, just unbelievable uh, experience, really. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to say thanks on the air oh, because listen. it was, yeah. My pleasure. So, and, and, and yeah, he loves to travel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram under now, obviously, Troy Anthony, but mm -hmm. also. Also, the genuine underscore article. The genuine article. Yeah. That's my so style. If you were wondering what the genuine article was, <laughs> that's the genuine article. Right? <laughs> and, and, and so with the emphasis on Italy, which is really actually kind of interesting, because most people I don't think understand that there's mm -hmm. quite a difference. I mean, yeah. one of the things I picked up when I was doing that behind the scenes is there were showrooms that cutters that were specifically yeah. Italian style. Oh, absolutely. And, and and then they told me that actually the Italian style came started off in England to begin yeah. with, and yeah. then it basically got yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So so explain about that. Talk about the Italian style. How is that different? Well, so I mean, so cloth and also styling are very different from England 
to Italy. Right. And so, honestly, uh, Italian, you could just think very casual, very slick. Uh, it's what Americans Vers come versatile. to Versatile. Yeah, versatile. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could do something really soft like this online. Oh, just oh, very soft. Oh, oh, sorry, hold on. Uh, <laughs> that was <laughs> totally a little, 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 little plug for little Triangle. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get away from it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I have a keen eye. <laughs> so, just the styling coming from Italy is very casual. I mean, obviously, look at the climate there. You know, yeah. uh, obviously, in the winter it changes, and it actually kind of goes to a little more of a British feel. But uh, in Britain, the weather is a little more gloomy. They get a lot more of a season, and so it has to be a little heavier, be able to resist the climate a little more. So that's the biggest difference. So I'm going to show off a little bit, right? Because right. one of the things they told me on Savile Row actually. Mm -hmm. that the uh, showroom, and I can't remember, sorry, I apologize, but they're the ones that are famous for their Italian. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who originated it. Yeah. Is that it actually started off where somebody was wanting to travel and wanted something that was a little bit more deconstructed. Totally. Because the rest of the stuff, the English stuff, is very, is very lined and yeah. very layered, mm -hmm. right? And so they wanted something that was more comfortable to travel in. And so the style was born out of that kind of need. And if you think about back in the day, you you know you dress differently if you were on safari, if you're on the grand tour, mm -hmm. you know right. all these things, right? Totally. And I, I can see how that would fit because culturally, if you've ever been to Italy, and, it, and you're right, there are certain areas that are in the north that are cold, mm -hmm. areas in the south there's, there's climatic differences in Italy. Absolutely. And that actually makes perfect sense to me because there's a styling of of clothing that actually works very well. Right. Mm -hmm. And with the culture being somewhat like a styled, formal, but not too much, and still having that sort of casual where I could take off my sport coat and then basically roll up my pants and, yeah. you know, kind of like that appeal of the Italian sort of lifestyle. Absolutely. Right. right. So that's, that's pretty cool. You, you would think there'd be more of that, but in fact, there isn't. Yeah, no, listen, I mean, the market has changed a little bit, and, uh, you, you know, certain things are to do with price, certain things are just to do with philosophy of a brand, you know, and I think that, you know, mostly for me, just like I said, spending time in Europe mm -hmm. and having a deeper appreciation for what cloth is and styling comes about from that, uh, it just, for me, launching my brand and also, you know, being in a partnership with Chester, I mean, his store is Italian made goods. Yeah. So I it just, it worked out and, and just the years of being in the industry and being around Italian made goods. So just let me, ask, let me ask you this because I mean I, I mean I've tra I've traveled quite a bit I mean it wasn't like by necessarily I don't want to make it sound like it's a horrible thing it wasn't by choice it was happenstance you know grew up in different parts of the world sure. traveled went to school in different places and so you by virtue of just being you get exposed to different things right and right. you you start to get sort of a little bit of a sophisticated eye maybe for certain things mm -hmm. whether whether you're intentional or not you find yourself one day being able to kind of do that right so I don't know if you agree with me but I also think that uh, we went through a period where men's clothing, in, in the United States specifically, was not really a big... I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I grabbed stuff and I just wore it. Kind That's of it. Thing. Then we got into this era or period... Well, I mean, it was always stylish at a certain level and price point, but the more commonplace was not as discerning. And now, then we went through about a period of about almost 10 years where we have built this sort of... A, more interest, more genuine interest, and it wasn't. It's not the girlfriends or the wives that are buying; it's the, the guys themselves that yeah. are buying and having a discerning eye. And I would think that over a period of time, it is natural that we find ourselves maybe today looking at nuances of differences, like an Italian cut versus a modern American cut or an English cut, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe even an appreciation for the different styles for different times and different functions. Yeah, totally. Like I could see myself wearing a structured tweed. But on certain occasions, maybe if, if maybe you're going to New York in January, right? <laughs> or, or, or if it's a fall, yeah, yeah, right? yeah I can right. lighten it up and make it more of a California Absolutely. wave, right? But I can see myself more comfortable in Italian. I mean, I mean, there's a return for double-breasted, for God's sake. Oh right? yeah, sure. absolutely. All of a sudden, big lapels double-breasted. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is uh, this is vintage. I've yeah. had this for a long time, mm -hmm. and I find myself putting it on and feeling very comfortable. Yeah. Ten years ago, I would have felt completely out of place. Well, not ten years ago, but maybe seven years ago, I would have felt completely out of place putting on a double breast. Oh, it looked yeah, like yeah. something I picked up from Salvation Army. Exactly. Left yeah. Over. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, if you really look at what the Italians have done, in fact, there are several nits that I have in here. They right. have taken that 50, 60 era, uh -huh. and they've twisted it and modernized it. Yeah. There was that point in time where more they... Fitted. More fitted. They came, when they first started, they 
they took things a little bit too, I, I, I think yeah. a little bit too sh sharp, mm -hmm. short, mm -hmm. and too sharp in, in a cut. And, but after that period of a year, year and a half, they then modified it. And that's where I feel that that's when the, the clothing industry for men, where it became more appealing to the guy, right. because it was more in tune with the fabrics and the colors and the variations of the styles. And that's what enhanced it that much more. And that's what they're doing even with that 40, 50 year, even the pleat. The oh, yeah, was, yeah. was gone and now it's coming back well, again. Yeah, well, and totally. I, think, I think it's interesting because when, when I'm listening to gentlemen like you guys that are really in into this, that are really kind of steeped into it, okay, and it's not like a happenstance in two weeks or a month. You guys have lived this. This mm -hmm. is part of okay. your DNA, if you will. Yeah. Right? That's what comes across when you are now basically styling somebody. Yeah, true. Because you may be able to say, well, you probably need to do this. Totally. Like it's all about amplifying that person and not necessarily putting them into a collection. Yeah, exactly. Especially when it comes to custom, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Or even just in the curated store, just as Chester's. I mean, how many people know about Paul and Shark? You right. know, it's not a brand that's technically a household name. Right, right here. But it's one of the yeah. finest brands out. It is. You know? And so. By the way, perfect selection for especially this area. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's why I really honed in on the Paul and Shark. I felt that uh, I carried that, of course, out in the desert, and I just felt that that would be a great focal point or footprint here in, in Corona Del Mar, Newport yeah. Beach area. Yeah. I, 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 I don't get the sense when I walk in here, honestly, I mean, I take that as a compliment. I don't walk in here, well, wait till I tell you the compliment. <laughs> but, 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 there's one coming. There's, yeah, there, there's one coming. I hear you. Okay, okay. But, but, but no, genuinely, when I walk in here, you're absolutely right. This is a gentleman's wardrobe. Yeah. It is. I, I, I've been struggling to try to figure out how to define it, and it's absolutely correct. I don't walk in here feeling like this is a retail store. Right. Honestly, it, it doesn't even, it comes across as hybrid mm -hmm. custom. Mm hmm. And, 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 and I also get the sense that I'm seeing things that I'm not going to go down the street and even at the high-end store, and we have some around us, Absolutely. that I'm going to see these. Yeah. these. These are curated items that are stemming from a philosophy and a feeling. Totally. Yes. Well, listen, honestly, a lot of guys, custom or not, have divided, have kind of driven towards the retail world of like the department store. Right. Whereas guys like Chester and myself, we actually go quite the opposite direction. We believe in genuality and quality and actually keeping the bar at a high level. Well, like, so. uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, so, so what is it? What is the difference? I think it's honestly, you know, it depends on, it's a personal relationship. Absolutely. But, it, but it's also, sure. but it's also an amplification of your own style. I mean, mm -hmm. like you may not even know what that is. Oh yeah. And if you're working with somebody that's not really about putting you into their mark, mm -hmm. right. they're actually there to amplify you it's like almost like a guide, if you will, of clothing. Yeah. That's when it really starts to gel for yeah. somebody. Yeah. And I've seen people, short, tall, um, overweight. If you can, if you think about it, like plump, mm -hmm. let's say. Yeah. Really t uh, trim. Mm -hmm. All of them, when they hit that sweet spot, and it's about them. Sure. And the clothes that makes the man. Yeah, clothes makes the man. But it's also the man that comes through the clothes. Right? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were talking. We were talking earlier about how it is really important to be very true in how in in, in, in evaluating the measure of a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, T tongue in cheek on the measuring, <laughs> right? But it's true. And if you're in the hand of an expert and a master craftsman, it's really what it is. Yeah. Then it's all about you. That is being brought out. Right. I mean, I'm looking at this, and it's like so many options of fabrics here. There's really not a one one size fits all. No, not at all. No. No, it's not. It's. I mean, this is going to look good on some guys, whereas this will, and some guys may just want solids. I mean, it just, it's all about finding that that sweet spot, like you said, right. and just honing in on that and then expanding on it and just creating their a story own, their in Their own wardrobe. individuality, and Absolutely. Their, own, their own personality within mm -hmm. their, their, their wardrobe. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's that's fantastic, guys. I mean, so tell me, just to, we'll end with this. What are you seeing? I mean, this is, we're in, coming in on summer. Mm-hmm. What are you guys seeing, and, and, and what does it take, for those who don't know, what does it take for a ordering a custom, uh, either sport coat or suit or you know article of clothing? What is the process, really quick? And then what are you seeing in terms of trends? I know there was a lot of wind pa window pane mm -hmm. for, a long, for a while now. Yeah, it still is. Right. It still is, yeah. But uh, it's changing a little, right? Yeah. Uh, Softer 
contrast maybe totally smaller sizing yeah the scale will always change and then I mean you have like things like this which are sort of like a glen plaid over a window pane um, but I think as far as construction um, softer shoulders yeah um, especially for a guy who runs hot like unlined unconstructed uh, that kind of Italian casual is making its way into the market and then brighter colors uh, I mean forest green seems to just keep coming around mm -hmm. but then also like light teals and light berry tones those are always going to be a big hit um, just depending on you know the guy's skin tone and everything but uh, as far I mean as for custom like what are you seeing like as far as ready to wear as far as ready to wear pretty much the same thing you're, you're gonna always have that variation but there's a lot more bolder prints mm -hmm. yeah. um, that variation with the inverted cuff and what have you and yeah but you got that where some of it is that more contemporary as I call it that contemporary cut not yeah. a trim cut but it's still giving that guy that opportunity to still continue to work out and what have you yeah. without it, you know, framing him in and then going ahead and he has to get another shirt or right. whatever it may right. be. So it's giving him that flexibility. But you see a lot of the different patterns and the colors like you were the, just and, mentioning. And, and they're bold. <coughs> I'll tell you, I, what I'm seeing is they're bold, mm -hmm. but they're actually somewhat sophisticated in the pattern. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. They're not just bold for in your face bold. They're bold. But there's a layer to sophistication. I'm looking around here, but I've, I mean, just in general, like okay. you got splashes, you got florals, but they're not like large in your yeah, face. Absolutely. You know, you can totally see them being worn with a sport coat. Mm -hmm. You can totally see them wear a pair of jeans down. You know, and I'm looking at you guys, and I mean, you know, you get a very comfortable knit, knit. and the mm -hmm. jacket, the right? Structure, mm -hmm. knit. ease could be worn. A million I ways. I can wear it with a pair of jeans. I can wear it with a pair of khakis. I can wear it with a pair of dress Exactly. Socks. Totally. However, right? I want to wear it. Totally. The shoulders very soft. Soft shoulders. Right. Yep. And I'm looking at the fabric here. You know that Troy has on, and it's a traditional fabric. Totally. Basket weave. But basket weave. But the coloration and the contrast is in nice and fresh, right? And then the way he has paired it. It, there's a sort of a classicness to the combination, yeah. but then the flair with the shirt. Sure, right. that's what I was going to get. And, and get then into even with well. the pocket skirt. Yeah, that's what I was going to get into as well. That actually, with bolder patterns, there's ways to do it without adding too many bells and whistles to where it's still classy or tasteful. Versus, oh God, that's so much going on. You know, we were talking about that, right? We were talking yeah. about how like everything became like, well, you know, let's get everything on the jacket. Totally. Let's get everything on the vest, and there is a certain sophistication that sort of less is more idea, if you Absolutely. will, mm -hmm. of restraint. Yeah. Right. Well, to bring it full circle, for me, in the beginning of my career, I loved wearing custom, and I'd check every single one of those boxes. And then you kind of get to know cloth, and you're like, you know what? The suit speaks for itself. The fit, the way the cloth performs, the, the way it looks, the way right. it shines in the light. That may be a little button detail, but not too much going on with the suit, and it just it makes it sophisticated. Well, because, again, right, we're, like we're talking about, it's about... The, the article of clothing for me, right? First, right. Yes. Then the image projection, but it's really for me, right? So if the if if the quality and the hand of the fabric is important to me, if if a monogram of a very simple, meaningful monogram for me that's not really in your face, large, bold contrast on right. the sleeve, right. white on white. Do you remember the, the Ralph Lauren line sure. where it's yeah. just white line? Yeah. It's like white label. It, we wore we wore the the, the polo. A horse, a horse, uh, horse ga horsey guy yeah. in contrast color for so long, then they basically went white on white, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Absolutely. like the, the more <laughs> elevated yeah. way to wear a polo. Yeah, right. So um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Before we leave, please share the websites where people can find out more about you, and let's give them the address for where the, where the men's wardrobe in Corona Del Mar is. Okay. Well, there's Vestiario. And spell it for them. V e s T I A R I O. And you have to come in here and say Vestiario, otherwise they won't let you in. <laughs> no, I'll let you in. Vestiariomen.com. Um, and we're located at 2721 East Coast Highway in Corona del Mar, right on PCH, right off of Golden Rod and Fernbeer. Yep. And my website is www.troyanthonyclothing.com. Troy Anthony Clothing on Instagram, and I'm direct all over LA. So. Come and see me. Gentlemen, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you for being on well. Selling Thank the Lux you. Life. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you for joining us for another episode, and we will be back with some more interesting Selling the Lux Life real soon. 
Thank you for joining us this week on Selling the Lux Life. We hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback via email on our social media platforms. Be sure to tune in next time as we continue discussing life's luxuries that inspire us while showcasing members of the Orange County community that share our same passion for sophisticated living.